Hi, this is Greg Kilstrom. Welcome to season three of the Agile World, where we discuss customer and employee experience, organizational and workforce transformation, and how business can adapt and continually improve in an Agile age. The Agile World podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to techsystems.com. To read more about the topics discussed in this show, you can go to my website at theagile.world and read my latest articles or get a copy of my latest book, The Agile Workforce, now available on Amazon and other retailers. My name is Greg Kilstrom, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of CareerGig and host of the Agile World podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the ongoing value of SEO or search engine optimization and how it helps Agile marketers continue to stay relevant. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome John Vong, founder and president of Local SEO Search. First, uh, John, welcome to the show. And uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about your background and, and why you started Local SEO Search back in 2013? Well, thanks a lot for the intro, Greg. Um, so 2013 was definitely a pivotal year for me. Um, I just finished working for 10 years doing sales and adver in advertising. And I dabbled in traditional advertising sales, newspaper, directories. I, I dabbled into online affiliate performance-based uh, marketing. And then uh, my longest stint was actually working at Yellow Pages Group. Um, so it's a printed directory of phone numbers uh, yeah. delivered to every single home. So I, I had a really good experience working with a lot of small, medium-sized bricks and mortar service type kind of businesses in every single niche, every single market uh, in the my home area of Toronto. And I was able to meet with thousands of business owners at that time. And the one thing that really connected and resonated with me was uh, these business owners were real, honest, hardworking people that served a purpose in the community. They understood how to run a good business. They understood why they were in business. And they were just frustrated with not getting good ROI. They're not getting good return on their investment in spend on traditional media. And users were changing their behaviors to more digital platforms and in particular Google. And that's where I wanted to play because as you know, the shifting of user behaviors that's a trend, right? And it, I either sync with the ship at Yellow Pages or pivot and try something new. And that's why I started this agency. Great, great. Yeah, that's, well, yeah, looking looking forward to talking some more about this. So just uh, just for, for some background for everyone, um, I think everybody in the audience understands at a very high level what search engine optimization or SEO is, but how would you define it um, obviously there's, there's a lot of, of details and nuance to it, but you know, how, how do you define SEO? Um, so for me, uh, search engine optimization is, um, Google and customers, right? They're trying to match people who are searching for you as a business owner, seeking out a question, information, or a product and service throughout that whole buying journey. And what, Google's trying to do is match the person who is seeking that out with the best website available out of their billions of websites out there on Google. So search engine optimization is trying to optimize your website for the customer and ultimately Google to have the best user experience and matching the user intent with the website that matches your business organically right. or naturally. Yes. Great. And how much of your time uh, within that? I mean, how much of your time is spent? Google obviously has uh, image search and shopping and jobs and, you know, all, all of those types of things. Voice search, all of those types of things. How much of your time is spent on the, let's call it the traditional, um, it's funny we can say traditional search, I guess, even, but, you know, the traditional text-based search and, and stuff like that versus some of these other ways of indexing content? Um, for us, uh, we optimize for every form of content from images, podcasts, audio, video, YouTube, uh, as well as most impor importantly, text-based because that's the first thing in terms of the text bar that appears on Google. And people are so used to that way of searching. And for you as a business owner, you might as well play where 
90% of the searches are derived from, especially yeah. if they are giving you information on how they're searching, what they're searching for. And you want to just match the intent, right? So there's all these questions that people are asking and you want to be served up as that leader, that thought leader, that expert for that given question or niche. Um, so ultimately that's what it's all about, right? Positioning. Yeah. Yourself. So for, for those that are not, uh, maybe in marketing or some, you know, related field, but not specifically tasked with SEO, why, why should they pay attention to like, what, what should they, what should they keep in mind when they're, um, in regards to SEO? So SEO is, uh... I, I would say search engine optimization is a great way to generate a lot of organic traffic that is uh, convertible traffic that gives you the best quality type of lead. Uh, because people who are out there seeking out your question or product or service, they have an intent purpose. They're actually going on a Google in control, looking for a solution. And there's different ways to play, right? You can do paid ads, you can do social ads, you can do emails, you can do funnels, you can do all these forms of digital advertising. With search, however, the users are in control as opposed to ads where it's being interrupted by their, I guess, search, right? Like if you're on Facebook, you're scrolling down and all of a sudden an ad pops up, right? And it's not really a search engine. It's more of a community of people that you're seeking out or trying to get an update of, of a friend's post or whatever it is, right? Yeah, yeah. So you have to yeah. understand the purpose of Google. And if you understand it, it gives you a lot of business opportunities to be in front of customers that are actively looking for your product and service. Yeah, I always I always did find that interesting about it's 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 the channel where customers are the most proactive right? other than walking into a store you know physically or, or something like that when it comes down to digital marketing it's um it's a the consumer is the proactive one as opposed to the marketer right? i find that i find that interesting about it yeah it's um, very similar to yellow pages right like if you, if you look at yeah. like the past 20 years before google existed yellow pages dominated for hundreds of years and it, it served a purpose because the usage was high. People knew that it was the most comprehensive printed directory of phone numbers delivered once a year, given for free. And when people were ready to buy, use a plumber or do a home rental or find a lawyer or a dentist, they picked up the yellow pages knowing that all the local businesses was there, right? Yeah. And they could yeah. decide who they wanted to pay. So not only were you just actively trying to sway people with content and hooks and call to action phrases and all the service offering. But there was already a huge audience of consumers ready to take action, ready to buy. And that's the difference between trying to sell stuff, like push stuff at people versus inbound leads. And that's what Google offers. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So how has the pandemic changed SEO? Um, if, if at all. Yeah, definitely some industries got impacted quite substantially, especially if you're in the hospitality, travel, tourism. Um, these industries, you know, people aren't moving as much. People aren't spending going to restaurants because there's a complete shutdown or lockdown, right, in certain cities, states, etc. So yeah. depending on your industry, uh, if you are a professional service, um, it hasn't been impacted the same way you're in business, but you're not full scale because of the capacity, right? Um, but you still need to be available. You need to have some presence. So for us, we deal with a lot of professional services, B2B type industries. So it hasn't really impacted us the same way as a lot of other industries. But with SEO, there's a lot of different ways to market, right? If people are in dealing with just restaurants, they might not even be around anymore, right? Right. right. Yeah. You know, it all yeah. depends. So for me, I have a diversified portfolio of different niches. I had a handful of um, tourism type clients, but I majority of my clients are professional B two B type clients that actually uh, increase their revenue during this 
time of crisis. So yeah, yeah. So for those for those organizations, then uh, there's they're, obviously they're doing a, uh, ideally a mix of of different types of marketing and and stuff. So how do you how do you position SEO in a mix of other things like advertising or email or you know even cult, like lead gen and stuff like that? How do you how do you recommend? I realize some you know different businesses have different needs, but how do you kind of put SEO in the in that context of it's a critical piece? But is it a matter of proportion should be spent, or you know, what's 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 the way that you work with organizations to to make sure they're putting enough resources, I guess, in, in SEO? Yeah, SEO is very complex. So my take on it is people who see Google Ads or social media or email marketing, they actually see some um, actual output from the ad itself that's generated. A lot of the things that go on in the back end with SEO, people can't actually see what's going on or they don't understand it, right? When you optimize a landing page or keyword research or you create content pieces that are, you know, gap analysis or you do link right. building, right? No one understands what you're talking about. So that's the biggest challenge. But if people see more of the long-term vision of, look, I'm positioning yourself as an expert and you're going to get inbound leads as a result of it, the quality of leads supersedes any lead. And if people have been dabbling on paid ads or social ads or email ads, like if you have a great list, you have a reputable business, then you focus more on internal marketing. But if you're out there new and you're looking at growing your company, um, you know, yes, you might have a lot of budget to play with ads, right? ROI wise, I, I feel SEO is still giving you the best return on investment in any in, in a lot of the small, medium-sized businesses that I work with, especially if you're a service-based higher ticket item, that's more of a, a long-term relationship type client that you're after. But if you're a product type of uh, company and you're selling widgets, then leverage different platforms, Ledger, leverage influence marketing, leverage you know different mediums and channels that suits your purpose. So understanding who you service Understanding who your clients are will dictate how you're going to spend your advertising dollars. Yeah, great, great. So as far as the, I mean, SEO has evolved quite a bit. I mean, I remember back in the day, I, I worked at a startup uh, back in the early 2000s, and it was simply a matter, uh, I mean, back then Google was but one of many players back then, and all you to, to game the, the search engines, you just needed to put enough keywords and, and, and stuff like that to get to show up a little higher than, than the competition. Obviously, things have come a long way. And, you know, what I what I see and what I've experienced is that Google uh, is rewarding what I would call more genuine, more and more genuine content and, and things like that. But, you know, in, in reality, since, you know, you're doing this every day and and is it is it as simple as just making good content or is there still, is there still a lot of technical things that in other words, how much are you writing for Google and how much are you writing for the user when you're, when you're doing a successful SEO campaign? So there's a lot of variables today. Um, it's no longer trying to hack or trick the system. And I think this applies to business in general. The ones that are successful are typically, I always refer, reference back to Yellow Pages because I met a ton of, or hundreds if not thousands of generational type kind of business owners that you don't get in today's world, right? A lot of people who are starting entrepreneurship or this digital age, they feel they can find quicker, faster, scalable ways to grow their business, but they don't know how to run a real business, which is, take care of the customers, understanding the competition, understanding pricing, understanding the value prop, unique selling proposition, understand how to really run a business, solid foundation. So more and more, Google is looking for those type of businesses to be established, become an expert. And it's not just creating any piece of content, right? It's more about like really vetting them with social proof, with 
if you are speaking, if you are mentioned in articles or magazines or publications in press, right? You have a column in the local newspaper. Like these are, take years to harvest a relationship, to be an expert. That's what Google wants, right? The real experts to be re with the results that customers want. That's ultimately what they're trying to satisfy the user intent, not Google's intent. Yeah, that's good. And I mean, I think that's a, I think that's great news for the user, right? Because I mean, it's, it's, a, it's one thing to get in front of them. It's another to actually give them something useful. So I, I mean, I think this is one of those areas where technology has truly gotten better for humans. Um, so I, I, I think that's, that's, that's great news. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna actually mention because if you think about someone that's just starting off, and they eventually hack the system to be number one on Google. Imagine all the leads that come to them and people have really poor experiences because they don't even know how to run a business, yeah. right? Yeah. What would that say to Google and let alone the user's experience? Will they continue coming back to Google if they had a poor experience knowing that there's a website that ranked very high, I clicked on it, I inquired, but this person has no real reason to be ranked in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that, that's a great point. And uh, that's one of, again, one of those nice things where it's a, it's a win-win for everyone. So it's, it's sustainable, I think. And, and ideally, you know, only gets better. So that's, that, that's great. Yeah, if um, you know how to run a business, always look at Yeah, up. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, one, one of the things that you, you referred to paid search earlier as well, what are your, how do you explain the relationship between paid and, and organic? Obviously, you know, we've, we've spent most of our time here talking about organic, but um, obviously paid search plays a role. How do you, how do you, when you work with companies, how do you explain that relationship and, and how they should be thinking? Yeah, paid is definitely uh, an option for a lot of businesses that want to acquire businesses business right away, right? Um, you have to understand the users, however. If majority of your type of client are not clicking on ads or are, especially if you're a bigger ticket item like a dentist or a lawyer, these are more relationship type clients that they're going after, right? People that are going to stick with you for 8, 10, 20 years. But if you're saying an emergency type business, like you're a roofer or a plumber, and there's an emergency that needs to be done, like fixed at your home, like five minutes, right? Yeah. You're going to pick up ads or anyone that needs it right away, tow truck, truck company or tire repair or something that you have no you know, time for to vet businesses. So there's a purpose. There's a time and place for ads, I feel. Um, and it's it's more about renting space, right? So if, if you feel that you can generate some good return and there's a marketplace for it in your whole list of type of ideal clients, if you're going after an emergency, great, right? Yeah. If you're looking for long-term relation type businesses, uh, customers, then SEO will give you and derive the best quality of leads that you're after because all your vetting of content, your website is positioned well to seek your best ideal type client avatar. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, um, one last question before we, uh, before we wrap up here as a, a former a digital agency owner, I'm always, I always ask um, people this cause I, I still spend some time thinking about it. Um, what do you see as, obviously there's a lot of things we talked about some of the changes that have already happened over time with, with SEO, but with a digital marketing agency model, you know, there's a lot of things that are being automated that weren't at one point. There's, there's a lot of changes underway. What do you see the five years down the road? Uh, what do you see ch how an, you know, the changes to how an agency might function or what, what's on the horizon for you? Um, I, I look at how we've ran the business. Like I started this bootstrapped and I had no SEO background. I was more a sales professional and I really am on the ground listening and talking to business owners. 
And I'm really focused on user behavior and what the customers are actually seeing and trying to fill the gap. So as long as there's software to support digital agencies, they can't replace what we as humans interact with businesses offer, right? Yeah. That's where AI, there's a gap, right? Because you're going to ask different questions. You're going to have empathy. You're going to want to care. These emotions, personality traits can never be detected with any software out there, right? People want to deal with real people, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like as long as there's that component that I, I don't think will ever get replaced because there's robots, there's drones, there's different technology out there. But humans are still humans, right? People are going to still marry each other as humans. They're not marrying right. robots, right? Right. So at least not yet. But not yeah. yet. <laughs> we'll see. But, but yeah. that's how I, I feel. Like as a yeah. business owner, as long as there's opportunity, if there, you're filling a gap with a product or service that people are willing to pay for and you do it better than other people and you know you become good at it and people are willing to pay a premium, you have a business, right? It's not rocket science, but there's a lot of other dimensions and a lot of facets to it. And you got to enjoy what you do, right? So for me, I, I'm very passionate with helping business owners, especially the, the local ones, small, medium-sized ones that resonates with my values, right? And if you have a strong enough cause and purpose, then you continue doing what you do. Otherwise, there's ways to pivot, ways to scale, do other things. If money is the thing for you, go for it, right? But yeah. there has to be something more to just money. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that makes sense. Well, John, thanks so much for joining. Um, it was great talking with you. For those listening, uh, what's the best way for them to keep up with what you're doing? Uh, yeah, so you can check out my website. It's www.localseosearch.ca. Um, we're based in Toronto, Canada, but we service clients across North America, UK, and Australia. We also uh, have a podcast called Local SEO Today, um, where myself and my VP of sales, uh, we just give a lot of insights. We interview a lot of business owners. And um, myself and Roger, we actually work with tens of thousands of local business owners while at Yellow Pages because he was there for over 30 years. And I was there for five, and that's where we met. Great, great. Well, again, I'd like to thank John Vong, founder and president of Local SEO Search for joining the show. Thanks for listening to The Agile World with Greg Kilstrom. See you next week. Thanks again for listening to The Agile World podcast brought to you by Tech Systems. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can learn more and get a copy of my latest book, The Agile Workforce, from my website at theagile.world.